Hi, I'm Chris, I like to paint things, and welcome back. This is part two of our series called Learn to Paint, where we take this model and learn some fancy new techniques on it. Last time I did rusted metal effects, and I thought they came out pretty good, I'll put a link to that right up top. This time, we're going to learn to paint fabric texture. Now, if you saw my last video, which you probably didn't, um, we ended up with this guy. It was a very dirty, rusty model, and I blocked out all of the spaces I was going to leave behind for fabric. So every spot in black, we're going to turn into bright red fabric to contrast with the dirt. I found this tutorial on twisted brushes, and we're not going to copy it to a T, but I will put a link in the description because it's very good. It really shows how to build up those sketchy highlights using tiny brush strokes, building up color from a really dark base coat and going higher. We're not going to copy it again, but it's fantastic nonetheless. I tried it out on this guy, Hello, and companion. what I really got from him was what colors I need to use. So we're going to start with a dark red to base, going up through a bright red and then highlighting extremes with like an ivory pale sand color. I started off with some Carnage Red from Reaper, mixed with a little bit of black paint just to get a darker color. We're going to go thin on this, and I normally tend to work with thicker layers than, you know, a professional painter should, but sometimes I'm lazy. Today we're not going to be lazy, so we're going to get a really thin, soupy consistency of a color similar to like Corn Red from Citadel. Now I can't stand those Citadel pots, so I've gotten rid of Corn Red. First step is a really, really thin layer over all of the black. You could probably go a little bit thicker than this again, and I normally do. I just can't be bothered sometimes to go with super, super thin coats. But I figure, you know, if I'm going to make a video on it, I'm going to do it right. You can see how dark this is after it dries, which is why we need to do two coats to actually make it the color that I wanted. And already this is going to create just a hair of depth. It's not going to make that red color just one tone. You get a little bit of that dark still sticking out in certain places. I also did some vertical lines on the hilt of the sword. I think we're going to paint it with the same colors, but maybe not in the same way, so I won't focus on it too much on this video, but it'll show up a few times because I think the hilt came out really nicely. Next step, we take just our plain Carnage Red, which again is kind of a darker red. It's not super bright, but it's nowhere near as dark as the mix we made. Then I block in all of these patches on his back. Now the nice thing about this cloak over like a folded cloak is I have spots that it's making me work up from. If you were painting this on a folded cloak, you would just be doing this over all the folds rather than all of these patches. The patches I think are going to really up our contrast as we can get in between them later and really build up. our shadows in the crevices and our contrast in the streaky bits. You can follow these same steps with a folded cloak. I just happen to go patches. Now that's looking okay. I mean, it dries a little hard to see. So we gotta bring everything up just a hair with dry brushing. Now this dry brush was fantastic when I bought it. Now it's a little beat up, but it's gonna do the job. So I'm gonna mix that dark carnage red with a pure red from the army painter or any bright red will do. And this is going to be more of a 50-50 because we're trying to find the halfway mark between these two colors. Again, this guy is a little beat up, um, so the dry brush didn't take as well as I wanted, which is why I tested it out beforehand on the base of him. I have some better dry brushes now, but it was small and I needed something small and in a pinch. So I did just vertical dry brushing top down to try and get the tops of those triangles, like the peaks, as opposed to the bottom. It's not going to be perfect, but it's also going to keep them elevated from the actual gaps in between the patches. Then I'm going to do the same exact thing with just red. I'm going to take pure red and do even more of that vertical dry brushing. Now, yeah, it doesn't show up much on camera. You can't really, really see what I'm doing. Didn't add a whole lot, but lucky for you, the next thing I did is I took that pure red. So I painted on some real highlights. I just followed the V and kept it super thin. I didn't want to fully cover it, I just wanted to tint the top halves of these bright red. Now it looks real striking going on, and I definitely get a little lazy on a few of them, especially the really hard to see ones up in the, you know, the nooks and crannies of the guy. 
but everything needed a touch of this light red. And then I even did a second coat, um, equally thin down to try and really build up some uh, contrast. I'm pretty good at layering up thin red paint. Other colors, not so much, which is why I went red for this. Now that handle, I went back in with some really vertical uh, highlights using this brush on its last legs, but now I originally tried to get each, you know, individual wrap and string to have its own highlight, and I realized I don't think I need to do that. As long as I highlight it correctly and then wash it, the wash will break up all the strings on its own, which is why we grab our Null Oil. Null Oil is a good paint and juice, guys. All you have to do is slather this all over the folds of it, of anything that's got texture and you are golden. Now this model, either I put too much on, something with the paint, I don't know, it really followed gravity a little more than null oil normally does. It ran straight down to the bottom and I kind of fought that a little bit. I could have put it on in, you know, in sections and let it dry over time, but I, I, what did I say at the beginning? I'm a little lazy, so I just slathered it all over everything and I just set them to dry. Several months later. Now, if you're following along at home, try not to let them dry for like four months. Just let them dry for like 30 minutes. Either way, I hadn't picked this guy up in forever, so I just kind of came back to him. I blocked out a few uh, spaces and did a gold recipe. I can put a link up to where I do this gold a little more in detail. I just, he sat on my shelf for a very long time, and it's tough to look at a model that's just sitting on your shelf, especially when you wanted to record him as opposed to just paint him for fun. Either way, blocking up that gold really inspired me to finish this. So I took some pure red and then some pale sand color as opposed to the other color I was using to highlight, and this ends up with a pinky highlight, but that's okay, we have a remedy for that later. So I did kind of a 50-50 mix of pure red and that pale sand color along with a much nicer, newer brush, and then did some streaky highlights. Now this time, we're gonna be doing that sketchy, cross-hatched almost highlight that is in our tutorial as opposed to just painting a, a triangle on top. So I went over every single patch on his nice cloak with a diagonal right stripe, and then I'm gonna do a diagonal left stripe, and it'll create like a checkerboard of really, really thin stripes. And then I came back in with a mix with a little more of our pale sand color and attempted to do some more thin, thinner highlights. If they're not, that's okay. As long as your paint's a little bit watered down, they'll blend pretty well. And then because this, I decided is gonna be plaid, I did a dot at every single intersection of pure pale sand color. It's a little bit striking, but that's why we take our red wash from Vallejo, which is just red wash and I don't I bought this not really knowing what to use it for but I think this is gonna be exactly what it's for it's gonna tie everything together under one hue of red and make it a little more saturated a little less pinky and hopefully a little more red so I glazed it on every part of fabric and I let it dry a few moments later now after it dried, I was very pleased with this. I did a few off-camera touch-ups, but I'll talk about them after I give you a grand reveal. Now that is my finished Oni model. Off camera I did the glow effects and I black lined some of the uh, fabric texture which really brought it together. I was going to do a video on the glow but I kind of didn't really feel like it. So anyway, let me know what you think. I'll put links in the description, all that good stuff. Uh, have a good one.